Welcome to Learn From the Experts, brought to you by WBOA. I'm Freda Brown, and today we're going to talk about space planning, and not the outer space kind. And with me today is... Barbara Sternow. I'm Barbara Sternow. I have my own business, Barbara Sternow Interior Design. And um, yeah, space planning is like the foundation of interior design, as far as I'm concerned. Sort of it's the first thing I address when I'm working on a project. Because you want to make your, um, your space work for you and really support your lifestyle. And um, it can be very different depending on what um, stage of life you're in. So. Um, I got into it when I um, was living in New York City and I was working as a graphic artist for a um, commercial real estate firm and part of my job was to go out and measure space and uh, so I went out and measured space and I really liked it so this became one of my passions. <laughs> So space is in including is, is your open space that you have and then you start cluttering it up. And so your, your obje object is to unclutter the space so that you have space to live in? Well, that's part of it, yes. Um, uh, maybe if I give you some examples, it will, it will give you an idea of- Great, of I need <laughs> examples. <laughs> of of um, you know, the kind of things that I would do. Um, I had a client who was a recently divorced and he was a bachelor and um, this was in Westchester County. I've done a lot of work in, um, in Westchester County, New York. And um, so he, he was the one who kept the house. And he called me and he said, you know, I, I just, I like want a fresh start. You know, I've been through this nasty divorce and I'm unhappy and I want this house to feel like it's my house. So I came into his house and he told me what he wanted to do. He had turned his dining room into like a little um, pod, really, like, you know, had this like kind of... office type thing. Well, it wasn't even an office. It was, it was the, the TV room, you know, and it had like this horrible brown, men love brown. <laughs> so like a man cave type uh, thing. Yeah, sort of a man cave, yeah. And, you know, it was all falling apart and it just looked awful. And, um, and then I went into his bedroom and he had, um, he had his office in there and I said, well, first of all, this is a no-no. You can't have your office in the bedroom. It's very bad energy to, you know, have your work with you as you go to sleep at night. So um, somebody had recently mentioned feng shui to me, and I did study it, but that's one, a big no-no in feng shui is to have your, your work in your bedroom. So anyway, so, so those were two things that I noticed. And then we went into his uh, main living space, which is, which is a beautiful space. The only problem was he never used that space. I mean, it had a beautiful cathedral ceiling, a fieldstone fireplace, and then it had this ratty furniture, and <laughs> <laughs> and and then hanging from the the very rustic rafters were these incredibly sort of delicate, you know, um, floral chandeliers, which seemed to have no place there. Of course, the ex-wife had picked those out. Um, so um, I said to him, Jim, you know. I think, first of all, we have to get your office out of the bedroom. If you're not going to have a dining room, if you don't need it, which he didn't, remember this was the, mm -hmm. the ratty brown okay. sofa, I said, well, why don't we turn that into your office? It's in the front of the house, you know, you can see whoever's coming in and out, it's a nice light space, and it'll make you feel more professional, because he worked from home. And um, so he said, gosh, I never thought of that. So um, I said, all right, well, let's do that. And then why don't we use this beautiful space that you bought the house for, you know? To be your the, man cave. Yeah, to, well, to, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, why don't we just, you know, we'll get appropriate furniture, we'll put your, you know, men love it, electronics. So we had to get the giant TV mm -hmm. for there. And, and he happened to love sound as well. So I fixed him up with my um, eight, you know, uh, audio visual person and he um, brought in all the electronics that he needed and so on. And, um, you know, so I just kind of, I, that's kind of the, the idea of space planning. You know, it's like thinking about, you know, how you're using your space. In that case, it's, you know, what, what you're using your rooms for. And, um, uh, you know, it's people get so used to living the way they live that they, they don't they, even they don't see, see it. it. You and, know? And, and you start bringing new things in and just adding things to it. Instead of creating a, a terrific space, you just keep putting things into it and making it, making it a smaller space. I just recently um, 
took out all my carpets and put in hardwood floors. And Good move. It was. I mean, and my rooms look so much bigger now. Yeah. And, of course, we took some stuff out that was never being used. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it just feels so much bigger and more pleasant and, and um, a place to be. Yeah. Yeah, th that's a really good point because, you know, clutter is one of the biggest problems we have. You know, we live in this incredibly abundant society. And, you know, we just keep collecting stuff and stuff and we drown in it and it starts owning us, you know. So, um, you know, that, and um, I'm, I'm always big on editing people's collections. <laughs> 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 you say, you know, if you can't get rid of things, then we just have to like rotate them because it's too confusing to have too much stuff around generally, you know. So h what, what makes a room look bigger or smaller? color or mirrors or what would be a good thing to be thinking about if you're looking at your room and saying oh, it needs something what, what but I don't what should I start with where 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 do I start what do I look at first do I just take everything out first and then start from scratch well if you're able to do that that's a good way to start you know because then you can kind of go through all your collections and you know see what's really meaningful to you what is it um Marie Kondo wrote a book that's been on the bestseller list forever it's like um I can't remember the name of the book, but it's like she's the, the Japanese guru of um, organizing, and she feels that you should only have things in your house that you truly love and need. You know, this also goes back to William Morris. I, I won't, I won't give you a history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in a, he's a, it was a um, arts and crafts um, uh, philosopher and designer. Um, but in any case, yeah, well, going back to what you're, you said, you, you changed your floors to hardwood floors, mm -hmm. that's a great way to make your space look bigger, you know. Um, another thing is just to create open spaces. I recently, uh, just two weeks ago, I designed a child's bedroom uh, in Hampshire County, and it was a small room, and um, the father, he was a single father, and he was very nervous about this child's bedroom, and it was, you know, he wanted to maximize the space. so. Um, I did it, you know, relatively inexpensively. I, I bought like IKEA furniture and so on, and I put everything around the perimeter of the room by design, so that there was a big, biggest, a big a space as you could have in the middle of the room. Because so they bring out all those toys. Yeah, and um, and when it was finished, you know, the father said to me, you know, you were absolutely right. You know, this really makes the room feel so much bigger. Because um, before they typically, you know, they kind of had a typical arrangement with the bed sticking out in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, you know, it takes up a lot of space in a small bedroom. Yeah. So um, good storage is another thing that really is a big part of space planning because um, if you store things appropriately and you know where everything is and you put it back, you know, then that keeps, <laughs> <laughs> that's one that's of the, the key things. That's the key thing, put it back where it belongs. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, when I talk to people, I try and, you know, really work with what their situation is. You know, I'm, I'm not like a cookie cutter, you know, got to do it this way. And one of my longtime clients, again, in Westchester, um, she had a special place for um, kind of having conferences with her children. And that special place happened to be in her bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know, all right, it's a little odd, but let's go with it, you know. And so when I redid their bathroom, and it was actually it was a very large bathroom, um, I put in a you know a comfy chair, and she would sit by her makeup mirror mm. and so on because she spent a lot of time in front of the makeup mirror, and she had discussions with her children, you know, about you know what's going on in their lives and so on. And you know, it was kind of like their special little place. So, you know, um, you you know whatever comes your way, you, if it's working, you want to keep it going as well, you know. Yep. Yeah. And what about color? Mm -hmm. And um, does color more about decorating the room, or is it more about you, the person, to decide what colors mm -hmm. you want? I think it's probably a little bit of both. You know, people, um, some people go to their closet to try and figure out what kind of colors they want to use. It doesn't always work in interiors um, because, you know, like me, you know, I love purples and pinks and stuff, but I don't know if I really want to live in a purple and pink house. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I think um, people get really hung up on colors, and it's the thing that people respond most to. Like when I, can, when I make a presentation, you know, sometimes I'll do a, a presentation, um, you know, the same furniture in two different color schemes, and people will be drawn to one or the other usually very strongly. So if you had mm. one tip they could give our audience today as to if they're thinking about 
their space mm -hmm. planning, uh, what would that be? Um, well, I would say um, uh, hire a designer. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I would um, try and think about your space more imaginatively and try and figure out, you know, where it's working and maybe where it's not working, you know, what you might like to change. And then um, if you yourself are not good at um, um, imagining things and, you know, seeing things spatially, you know, ask your friends and, um, you know, ask your girlfriends or your husbands or, you know, people who are, are, whose houses you admire and ask them, you know, how they think about it. That's a great idea. I just had, I had taken all the pictures off my walls mm -hmm. and, and I had two rooms that were kind of open between each other and mm. they said this one should be in this room and not where I had them in, in mm -hmm. this room and they were being lost mm -hmm. on, in the wall in that room but on in, when I put them in the, in the living room they just blossomed mm -hmm. so yeah uh, that that's a really good good thought asking your friends so uh, that's all the time we have for today so if you want to learn more about Barbara Sterno you can go to uh, WBOA.org thank you